everybody. Um, um, first of all, let me thank Eric Santamaria for once again inviting me to um, join in this um, amazing webinar. Um, so my brief this time is to talk on local and free flat reconstruction for the hand. As you know, the hand is such an important structure in our body and when we're reconstructing any part of it, it's very important to consider in equal measure that both the functional and the aesthetic aspect. Um, we must not let our reconstruction be the source of embarrassment um, at all. And, um, you know, it's, And when we're talking about reconstruction, we need to talk about both the recipient, but also the donor side, um, aesthetic. You know, when you're considering the donor side, you know, why would you want to put a donor side that's somewhere very obvious uh, and hard to hide? Why not hide it somewhere that is very um, easy? So, Nowadays, microsurgical techniques are very routine. We have great choice of flaps, so we need to reevaluate more critically each reconstructive option that we have. So, as you know, instead of taking the reconstructive ladder, we should consider taking the elevator and just finding the best option for each um, problem that we have. Uh, there are plenty of local and regional flaps, solutions for more hand injuries nowadays. And many are devised pre-microsurgery, pre-perforator flap era. Many are very good, but some are quite mutilating. And it's those that are less mutilating that I'm interested in. So I'm just going to talk about my preferred local flap options only, okay? I'm not going to cover everything comprehensively, but the ones that I prefer to use. And it centers mostly around perforator flaps, who are, which are our friends. So perforator flaps also blends very well with the propeller concept for hand reconstruction. Uh, you can use it with the donor side being the forearm for the, the dorsum of the hand and the palm, for example. This uh, so-called Becker flap described by Corinne Baker, uh, based on the ulnar artery perforators. But you know, although the perforator that she described was quite consistent, being coming out just two to four centimeter proximal to the PZ form, but don't be hang up on that um, because as I'm going to show you um, in this particular case. You know, where I was planning a, 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 a Becker flat. And when I went exploring, here's the ulnar artery, this is the FCU, and there was no perforator going into my flat. But not being put off, you could carry on searching, and there you see a nice vessel perforator coming up. And that uh, means we can use a freestyle approach uh, and say, right, okay, any perforator will do as long as it goes in and supply my flap. So this is from the anterior interosseous artery itself. So you can adapt quite easily. It's no problem. Any perforator can be done. So don't be hang up on one specific perforator as whether you can do a flap or not. And so here's the end result, which is very, and the thing I like about the Becker flap is that uh, you can keep your scar, you close the donor side most of the time and you keep your scar sort of uh, on the owner side of the hand and it's well hidden. And it can reach quite far distally into the dorsum and the palmar aspect of the hand for small to medium sized defects. Moving on to the, the hand itself, uh, on the dorsum, uh, again, the propeller concept can be used and you can do uh, a reverse dorsal metacarpal artery flap uh, as described by Maruyama in the past. But the dissection 
I don't quite like because it's a bit deeper and you go go in between the 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 extensor tendons and if you encounter a uh, a a janchura tendini you may have a bit of a problem raising the flap so therefore much i prefer to use the quava flap which is a pure skin perforator flap uh, and and it's based more on the intercommunication between the palma and the dorsal metacarpal artery uh, and this perforator comes through and then comes up onto the skin. Uh, and here are some examples of its applications throughout the back of the hand, onto the finger, and you dissect and look for the perforator. And it's usually uh, just distal. The communicating branch just comes distal. Um, to the transverse intermetacarpal ligament. Um, so here's the flap turnover. And the quava flap is mostly um, um, set to reach only to the level of the PIP joint, uh, as shown in this case. Beyond that, maybe it's such a struggle. But here's an interesting one that I did recently where the defect on the index finger was um, quite extensive and more distal all the way into the pulp. And after the debridement, um, I tried to do uh, the flap very, uh, based on the vessels that are more distal between the digital artery itself and, the, and going dorsally. And if you can dissect that out, then you can uh, pivot your flap uh, more distally and allow it to allowing it to reach uh, onto the pulp of the finger as shown here. And here's the end result uh, after about a year. Uh, scars is good and uh, functionally she is very good. Now moving on to the the dose, the, 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 the digit itself. You can uh, base flaps on the dorsal digital artery, uh, like so. And the adipofascial flap is actually a very useful one uh, for flaps. And you raise these flaps uh, below the subdermal plexus to the paratenone, and that's your, uh, your, 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 your adipofascial flap. And uh, useful for coverage of the dorsum and the dorsal lateral aspect of the digit. Uh, and I use it as a rotation flap rather than flipping it over uh, because it works better uh, and allow you to reach more distally like so. Uh, here's an example of the two digits uh, reconstructed uh, with adipofascial flaps like so, raise and transpose. And Sam again for the little finger, again the defect and the tendon reconstruction was then covered with a turnover, uh, transposition, rotation, uh, adipal fascial flap. And then you put a skin graft over it. And that can produce a nice end result uh, like so without uh, encroaching on to any other digit. So it's all homo digital flaps. So going more distally, um, you can base flaps on the dorsal digital arteries like so, and as described by uh, Koshima originally, uh, you can use it to transpose an island flap to cover the defect on the side of the digit and even on to the pulp. You can close it directly and don't have to have a skin graft and um, and that produces a very nice end result like so and uh, it doesn't affect uh, uh, flexion of the thumb in this case here. Um, now I want to move on to a very nice flap that I like and it's called a step advancement flap. Uh, it's really a it's really an evolution of the Venkata Swami flap 
uh, and uh, I like it. I think it works very well. Uh, it's described by uh, David Evans, uh, who I worked with before. Um, so after the debridement of this fell replantation, uh, you start in the mid uh, the the mid lateral line there and raise and stay on the uh, flexor sheath level uh, and then your pedicle is uh, safe in and then you can then step it up you see everything is step up one and you isolate it down to the just the pedicle itself and then close directly like so so it's homo digital is sensate and you don't sacrifice the vessel itself and it produces a nice result like so and functionally you can get full extension and flexion of the finger without any problem so the choice of flap usually is based on uh, assessment of what's missing and what's needed what's the best be it local or free and which one gives you the lowest mobility and when it comes to composite tissue transfer like so, then you're more tending towards a free uh, flap reconstruction. Uh, uh, and you have a whole series of choices or options uh, when it comes to free tissue transfer. So my, free, my preferred free flap options for standard hand reconstruction, well, first of all, remember, the replantation is the best composite tissue transfer. You can get, you can't get any better than that. All right. So when it's successful, you get a great uh, end result, and it's done in one go. Now, venous free flaps is uh, is is one option that some people like, but I find that uh, I have some issues with it. I mean, it can work, as you can see in this particular case for multiple digits. These two were the reconstructed with venous free flaps, uh, and you can see it can work finally um, but more often when you're using a venous free flap uh, quite a, you know you reverse it of course uh, to take care of the the valves in the vein but this is a more common thing initially now it looks nice and pink then there's a period within a couple one to two weeks where it starts to look as if it's struggling and you think whether is it actually working uh, the dynamics of the blood flow through the vein is actually uh, changed and it, it makes it uh, make this uh, appearance quite common with venous uh, free flaps. You get uh, epidemolysis and you maybe lose a little bit superficial portion of the flap. So it's not my favorite, quite apart from the fact that it's the worst uh, donor site you can get. If you can't close it directly, you end up with a skin graft. And this free flap, you know, used for ring avulsion fails, so you end up with the worst of both worlds. So for me, the skip is my workhorse free flap for uh, a lot of things, including hand reconstruction. And it's different from the conventional groin flap. Uh, the skip is based on the perforator of the SCIA, as shown here. Uh, and um, you can use it uh, for a lot of um, hand reconstruction as well. And it's very easy to find. You know, ASIS here, I start dopplering around there and go below the fascia and you see very nice vessels here. And uh, the good thing about this uh, is that you can also, about the skip is that you can also having the fascial element as well, so you can cover over nerves or tendons to, uh, to facilitate uh, free gliding and to protect the nerves. Um, and so here you are, uh, skip flap was used for reconstruction of the middle finger and that's the end result and it settles down really well. Uh, here's a, another skip flap used on an 18 year old young lady who had a full thickness burn on unsalvageable digits. Um, and this was covered with a skip flap. And at six months, uh, she has a mitten hand, but at least um, she can 
at least grip with the thumb and the flap. Uh, here, distally, um, you know, you can think of local options, but I prefer sometimes to just go for the free flap option as shown here. And, and uh, the, just to indicate the small size of the vessel, this is the ulnar digital artery and the pedicle is an end to side and then the dorsal vein. And that's the end result and great donor site reconstruction complete in one stage. So the skip can also be used as an osteocutaneous flap as in this particular case of a gentleman who avows his right thumb off and uh, he came about a week later to see me um, and options were discussed but he refused a tool transfer uh, because of being uh, South Asian. Um, he wears flip-flops where he needs the big toe to grip. So I decided to reconstruct him with a skip with osteocutaneous vascularized flap. And so here's the flap uh, and the bone on x-ray. And then after one revision, uh, that was the end result. Uh, he didn't want any more revision. And, uh, and it works very well. As you can see, functionally, he gets it to work really well. You can see it turning, turning, very happy with the function. So again, another sort of variation of the application of the skip flap for hand when there are multiple digits that are involved. Uh, I sometimes look for, you know, the, the, the branching pattern and then I can raise uh, different skin paddles uh, all on one pedicle um, like so. So that avoids the need to syndactylize the fingers uh, like so, and therefore it is easier for rehabilitation uh, and the end result is also very satisfactory, like so. Now, this is one probably the smallest skip flap I've ever done. It was for an incompletely excised squamous cell carcinoma on the nail bed uh, and I perform a wider excision and then onto the bone uh, he didn't want it shortened at all for sure and so did a skip flap on him and the anastomosis was to a dorsal branch of the ulnar digital artery and it matches very well and then a dorsal vein to the vini comitan and that was the initial result and after a revision uh, this was the final end result and he was very happy that he kept the length of his digit so the skip flap is great because it's an axial, um, uh, uh, has an axial blood supply. So you can raise long, large, small flaps based on a uh, perforator of the ACIA. And quite often when you see a big cutaneous vein, you can use that uh, to aid your drainage. And so you don't have to uh, anastomose almost the vini comitan and you can do suprafascial dissection and everything is easy to raise and it's very thin as well. You can thin it very radically and you can have chimeric uh, flap uh, composition as well. So it's a, all we know is a very versatile flap as you can see. Disadvantage, small caliber of the perforator, that's really the only thing, but you know, requires microsurgical skills, but I'm sure most of you can. Medial plantar free flap, let me finish on this. It's also a great one because it's really replacing like with like. You go to the sole of your feet, the tissue is exactly the same, glabrous tissue, glabrous skin, and you can see raising it. Uh, and joining it up to the uh, ulnar artery itself. Uh, this was for a malignant melanoma and that's the end result. And 
there was no need uh, to uh, revise the flap uh, at all. And in one stage, you can get really good result because you know you're replacing tissue that looks alike completely. So the modern approach to hand reconstruction involves restoration of function with the best cosmesis. Uh, and it requires a more critical reappraisal of the local options. And the probable concept works very well with perforated local flaps on the hand. And uh, you should have a lower threshold for using free flaps if that's the better choice uh, for a donor site, for example, and it's less mutilating. So think big, think complex, and be brave. Thank you.